In this video, I will show you how to design and create a data confidence feed. Data confidence feeds are designed to do some analysis on a given feed's data and report back a message which is then shown in the Kylo Operations Manager under the Key Performance Indicator of Data Confidence. An example routine might be having a data confidence feed trigger when a particular feed finishes, which would then query to get the latest feed execution data and determine if all the rows passed its validation, and then show that result back in the Kylo dashboard for further analysis. There are some key parameters that are required when setting up a data confidence flow. You need to pass in the following a category, which indicates the category of the feed you are validating, feed indicates the feed name you are validating, a tb.job type, which indicates it's a data confidence or a check data job as a value of check, a check data.validation check, which is a boolean which results to true or false, indicating the success or failure and an optional check data that validation message indicating what happened, whether it was success or failure. One further attribute you might need to know is the trigger feed JSON structure. Many times a data confidence feed should be triggered immediately after a particular feed runs. That type of feed is known as a trigger feed, and it gets the resulting JSON as the flow file content. In this case, for a data confidence feed, you will be relying on what feed just finished, or in that case, the dependent feed names property. Let's go to NiFi and see how we can use this. I am in NiFi, and I have a sample data confidence feed which I'm going to walk through. This particular feed is available in the Kylo sample feeds, known as the data confidence invalid record check. Let's go walk through the various processors and parameters that are needed to set up this data confidence feed. First, we start off with the trigger feed processor, indicating then that one that creates this feed can wire this in so it triggers immediately following the run of a given feed. Next, we're going to evaluate that JSON structure passed over from the trigger feed to get the feed name we're going to validate. In this case, we're going to use the JSON path and grab the first value in the array of dependent feed names. This will be a string indicating the category dot feed name that we want to validate. We next go to an update attributes processor, which will initialize some properties in those parameters and put them in the flow file. Here, we're going to be using NiFi expression language to parse that feed name we just got from the JSON and get the category, the string before the, the dot prop, and then the feed name, the string after the dot. We also have another property we're going to expose to the end user, allowing them to tailor up or down the data confidence for this feed. This here is an invalid threshold percentage. What happens here is the end user that defines a feed is able to uh, set the percentage of records they allow to be invalid. We also set the other required property, TB job type, and make its value of check. So then operations manager will be able to render this correctly in the data confidence key performance indicator. That's going to send on over to execute a HQL query. This query is going to go and run a select and look at the last run for that given partition of that feed and query out the total records that were valid and invalid along with the validation message. We're going to convert that data from Avro to JSON and then we're going to add in a few more parameters back into the flow file. We're going to parse the message and the validation success or failure key 
from the HQL query. We're going to add in some other properties which then can be viewed in Operations Manager indicating the total number that were invalid, the percentage that were invalid, and the total count that was processed. I am now in Kylo. Let's go look at the Data Confidence Invalid Records template we just saw in my file. Notice we have selected the invalid threshold percentage to be rendered for the end user to supply, rendering it as a number. Therefore, they can indicate a percentage they allow to be invalid. Now let's go create a feed using that template. Here I'm going to go validate the customer registrations data. And now I supply the invalid threshold percentage. In this case, let's only allow 1% of the data to be uh, invalid. And we'll have it be triggered immediately when the customer registrations feed finishes. Now let's go through and trigger that customer registrations feed and see the results of our check data data confidence feed. Here we are back in operations manager and I just ran the customer registrations feed. Notice now we see our validation of our customer's feed that just ran. Looking at a given job run, we get the message saying this job was valid and it was only 0.2% of the rows were invalid, below our threshold we supplied of 1%. That concludes the video on how you design and configure a data confidence flow in NiFi.